there. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've heard beautiful anointed singing. But nothing takes the place of the word of God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. We are so blessed tonight to have this dynamic and anointed woman of God in our midst. And again, I just want to reiterate my compliments of what they're worth <laughs> to Dr. Murray and her staff for the planning of this great international convention. Amen. From the theme to the powerful seminars to the powerful word of God that's been spoken in one voice. There's been unity amongst the messages this week. Amen. All the way to the speakers. And certainly we know it took some um, planning to get this powerful speaker here tonight. Amen. I told her as I was sitting there, it'll be nice to hear more than 20 seconds of your message. <laughs> Amen. Let me just read her biographical sketch. Amen. Um, Evangelist Teresa Black. She's the first lady and co-pastor of Spirit of the Living God Holiness Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Evangelist Teresa Lynn Black is a co-pastor, first lady of the Spirit of the Living God Holiness Church. She was born July 18, 1963. That's a, that's a self-confident woman to put a, put a year out there. Oh, bless him. Hallelujah. In Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> she received the Lord at the early age of 15, my God, and started preaching at the age of 16. God has blessed Evangelist Black with a powerful anointing to preach the gospel. Evangelist Black also stays active within the community. She has participated in a project called Sumter County on the Move, a program geared to promote fitness and healthy eating. She has also served on the managerial level for the Sumter County Summer Feeding Program, a program geared to promote healthy eating for children. We certainly need that. Where she supervised the distribution of over 1,200 lunches per day to children. In that capacity, she won consecutive yearly awards for the number one site supervisor. That deserves a hand clap. Amen. Evangelist Black married Pastor Wallace Black Sr. in 1984. Praise God. God blessed them with three children, Jennifer, Wallace Jr., and Stephanie, and they're all in the house tonight. <laughs> Praise God. That's a blessing. Praise the Lord when your whole family is saved and following you to heaven. She's a true evangelist, anointed singer, playwright, motivational speaker, and has worked in the school system teaching elementary and middle school. My God, she's been tried in the fire. She even had the opportunity to teach her youngest daughter, Stephanie, in the seventh grade. Hey, Amen. That would have been my kid's worst nightmare for me to be there teaching. So much can be said about her accomplishments in the church and her accolades both spiritually and naturally. But her true motto is Psalm 149 and 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Come on, give God a hand clap as I present to some, introduce to others, Evangelist Teresa Black from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Somebody ought to clap your hands and give God a praise on tonight. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor you're in the right place tonight. And whatever you need, God's got it. Oh, you ought to act like God is able to do anything. Amen. I was looking around and I was noticing a lot of things going on. But one thing I want to know everywhere I go, I just want to know where the praise section is.
Amen. Amen. I tell you, the Lord is in this place on tonight. He's been here every night. I've been live streaming in Sumter, South Carolina. Ever since Monday night when Mother Murray came and broke the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And she sat down and told it and expect us to receive it and don't think twice about it. Amen. I thank God for the warning on tonight. She gave us a warning of what the Lord had told her. Let's give God a hand praise because warning comes before destruction. We thank God for Mother Murray on tonight. We give honor to Apostle Murray tonight. Amen. And to his beautiful wife, Lady Danielle. We praise God for being here. Amen. We thank God for all of these preachers and pastors. And I'm just excited because I look around and I have so many friends. Some I just met today. But it's like we've been knowing each other for a long, long time. Amen. Praise God. I don't know everybody by name, but I, I thank God for every one of you. And praise God for Pastor Cooper. Amen. Pastor Diane Cooper. I thank God for her. Amen. I thank God for Evangelist Margaret Keel. Thank you, Jesus. I was talking to Pastor Cannon in the back, and she was sharing some more wisdom with me. And I thank God for it. You preached last night. Maintain. Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to just maintain. Now don't get mad. Just maintain. Don't get mad. Just maintain. Amen. See, a lot of times we get mad because folk will call us out, but you ought to just say, you've been doing what you've both been doing. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> Hallelujah. And I thank God, amen, for pa amen, Evangelist Bookman. Drummer. Amen. Praise the Lord. And my friend I met today, I, I, I tell you, this, this, this woman is, is just awesome. I mean, she just, she just made my day. First Lady Lee. <laughs> she made my day on today. And I praise God for every one of you in your respective places. To my husband and my pastor of 31 years of marriage. Wave your hand. Just step out a little bit. Just step out a little bit. I want everybody to know who, can, who, who I belong to. Come on, just a little bit further. Come on, just a little bit further. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. <laughs> Amen. 31 years, and I praise God for him. I thank God for my, our youngest daughter, Stephanie. Wave your hand, Steph. Our only begotten son on the drums, Minister Wallace Black Jr. And my oldest daughter, our oldest daughter, Jennifer. I love her. I love her. I love them all. And tonight they are here with us, and I thank God for them. They're not married yet, so they get a chance to go with me where I go. And I'm excited about that. I'm just excited about that. So, so anybody trying to find them, y'all going to have to get in line if y'all got to follow. Look at somebody say, God will work it out. <laughs> Don't break up the family circle. Don't break up the family circle. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Hallelujah. We come to enjoy the Lord even more. I don't purpose to be long tonight. Just come to do what thus saith the Lord. And I want to thank Mother Mary, Murray again for having me. Praise the Lord. I appreciate you tonight. And I don't take it light. And I don't take it for granted. I'm excited to be here all the way. Y'all can I was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina, so I can't knock that. But I live in Sumter, South Carolina. Amen. Everywhere I go in Texas, everybody put me back in North Carolina. But that's all right. I was born in Fayetteville. Amen. Praise the Lord. But our church, God has blessed us with a ministry in Sumter, South Carolina. And we are just so excited about what the Lord is doing. Because God is good and he is greatly to be praised. And tonight, as I said, amen, I don't purpose to be long. And if the word of God hits you, I'm not aiming directly at you. But if I hit you, I don't mean to miss you. Hallelujah.
Because I found out a long time ago, you don't make friends with the word of God. You make friends with Kool-Aid. I know some of y'all saying, Bible said, if you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. But never told me one time to compromise the word to get friends. Amen. So, I, and, and really, I'm fresh out of Kool-Aid tonight. So, I believe that everybody that love God is going to love his word on this night. So, from the book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, and just the sixth verse. And the word of God says, so built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, stay focused on the work. We got to work while it's day because the Bible says that the night is coming and no man can work. And I find out that our biggest problem a lot of time is that we don't realize the fight that we're in. It's the enemy's job to stop us from finishing what God started. For the Bible says that I'm being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me, We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So whatever God started in you, let God finish it. And I realize that on this Christian journey, there'll be times when we suffer things and we'll go through things. And there are some things that we may never understand. But the point is, the Lord would never put more on us than we're able to bear. And the God that we serve would never ask us to do anything that he don't think that we're capable of doing. And if God brought us to it, they told me a long time ago that God going to take you through it. And if God trusts you with it, then God have confidence in you. So tonight I find that a lot of time we allow the enemy to sidetrack us. And to get our focus on what God has called us to do. Because everybody that know God got something to do for God. I know a lot of times people would ask you a question and say, what do you think God have me to do? God will share with us everything that he has designed for our life. And so tonight, if we know him, we ought to be doing something for him. And it doesn't matter, amen, how long you've been in the church. I tell people, going to church don't make you saved. So stop looking everybody in the same category, talking about church folks. There's a difference between church folks and the people that really know God. Because church folk ain't just ain't going to do right. Anybody can go to church. Amen. But it takes somebody that have had a real encounter with God. And that's been born again. That's been saved from their sins. That's saved and sanctified. And filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a true born child of God. So folk have the tendency of saying, you know, people, uh, 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 church folk do this, church folk do that. And I try to explain to them, I say, you got to understand, church folk, that's just because you're in church, that don't mean you're saved. And so we got to understand that God got a real people. And I want us to understand that God got somebody that's going to live right. God got somebody that's going to do right. Is anybody here going to do right tonight? And, 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 I, and I find out that the enemy will try to stop us from getting the work done that God have called us to do. And so a problem that we have is that people, we get with the wrong people. And I tell people all the time, you got to surround yourself with the right people if you want to go anywhere with God. I can't understand people that say they're going on with God, but they're hanging around folk that don't want to go nowhere with God. My mama said it like this. She said, misery, love company. And people that's not going anywhere will try to stop you from going somewhere. So you got to learn that you got to get with somebody that's going somewhere. And if you're hanging out with folk that ain't going nowhere, that don't, amen, they're not serious about the things of God, then you ought to change your company. Because if you're going higher and they're not going anywhere, the Bible said, how can two walk together? 
except they be agreed. So therefore, if we're hooking up with people that are not serious about God's work, we need to regroup and get with the right people. So I find out that if I'm going to do or keep my focus on God, I got to find out where my inheritance is. And the Bible says that my inheritance is among them that are sanctified. So I got to hang out with the sanctified group. I got to hang out with the holy crowd. I told people back home, if we're going to do this holiness thing, we might as well do it right. If we're going to live for God, we might as well do it right. Whatever the world do, they do it the best they can. And we are people of God. If anybody, amen, has excellence in them, it is God. Ends to do. You got to get busy doing it. And stop trying to get approval of everybody. Stop trying to get people to pat you on the back. And tell you that you're doing a good job. Because sometimes people won't encourage you. But the people of God will encourage you. You just got to get hooked up with the right people. And so a lot of times I find out that we get discouraged because, amen, we're looking for accolades in the wrong place. And we get discouraged and say, well, I'm not coming to church no more. I don't think I'm coming this week because it seems like nobody liked me and they just passed by me. And child, I've been in the church so long and it, it seems like everybody just done forgot about me. But you got to learn one thing. Your focus is in the wrong place. And I find out that when we get unfocused, that's when we get out of the will of God. When something is in focus, it's clear. But whenever we get out of the will of God, it becomes cloudy. And everything that God wants, we can't see it because it's cloudy. And everything that God expects, we can't see it because we're out of the will. But you got to learn that God wants a people that's going to go all the way. They told me a long time ago that anybody can go when things are going well. Anybody can go when things are going good. Anybody can go, amen, when the money is in your pocket, in your bank account, and it's running over. But when we go through the point of suffering, we feel like God have left us. But I want to give you some good, good, good words tonight. You're not at your best when you're on the mountain. You're at your best when you're in the valley. And a lot of people think that they're at their best when everything is going good. But that's not when you're at your best. But you're at your best when you're going through your suffering. When you're going through your trials. And you come out with the victory. Does anybody want to come out with victory tonight? Anybody want to come out with the anointing tonight? Tell your neighbor, stay focused on the work. We got a work to do for God. And it's the enemy's job to stop us from getting it done. I don't know about you, but I've been hit from the back and the front. But I made up my mind, I'm out here now. So I might as well stay out here. Because the Lord didn't bring me this far to leave me. And God promised that he would be with me always. Until the end of the world. So therefore, if God is for me, he's more than the world against me. So when I cry loud and spare not, it does not matter who don't like it. When I tell him what thus said the Lord, it does not matter who don't like it. Because as long as God, somebody ought to say as long as God. As long as God is on my side, I'm going to be all right. You got to learn how to take God and leave everything else alone. You got to stop trying to see how much you can still do and still be saved you got to stop looking around trying to see what everybody else doing what they doing on that side of town what they doing across town but you ought to focus on what God have called you to do if God called you to pray look at your neighbor and say pray without ceasing if God called you to preach you ought to preach till Jesus come if God called you to sing and be anointed you ought to sing until the heavens fall look at somebody and say stay focused you gotta stay focused you gotta stay focused and folk looking around talking about hey amen I'm tired of hearing about all that holiness I'm tired of hearing about we can't do this and we can't do that 
we can't go there and we can't come over here but tell your neighbor whatever God brought you out of he meant to bring you out of it because if God didn't bring you out it would have killed you so you ought to tell God thank you for bringing me out somebody ought to say focus 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 you got to stay focused you got to get your eyes off the TV you got to get your eyes off the Facebook you got to get your eyes aim out for kick you got to stop sometime live streaming and get down on your knees and call on the name of the Lord for the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and if you really want to get the work done you got to seek God like you never saw them before you gotta get in God and let God get in you is there anybody in here that wanna get in God somebody ought to shout yes I wish I had a praying church anybody feel like praying for me you gotta stay focused because there's a lot of people that have let down the standard they don't want to live for God no more anything goes anybody can come they can feed you off of any plate but I'm not eating off anybody's plate if the plate ain't clean you might as well pass me by I want a clean vessel I want a holy vessel I want a righteous vessel is there anybody in here that don't mind being sold out for the master's use look at your neighbor and say you gotta sell out to get this work done you gotta give up and let God have his way you gotta let God move in you like nobody else can you gotta let God you gotta stay focused you gotta stay focused and so many have lost their focus they're looking at everybody else when they can do it and they got 1500 members they can do it and they're blessed but look at your neighbor and say you can't do it because you've been called out for such a time as this and because the Lord have need of you you can't even run from him you try to run but you can't get away look at somebody and say the Lord is calling you for a great work you got to get busy you got to get down to business and let God move and let God bless you because you're not saved just for yourself there's somebody else you got to bring in the kingdom look at somebody and say focus hallelujah so while we standing around Wondering how much we can get away with and still be holy. How much we can get away with and still sing on the choir. How much we can get away with and ain't nobody going to notice. You forgot who really do notice. God see and God going to reveal. I know sometimes people say I'm not going to tell my business because all the church want to know is your business. It's just my job to keep you focused. When I see you going to the left, I got to pull you back in. When I see you getting out of the will of God, I got to pull you back in. Because the Bible says the devil, as a roaring lion, goeth about seeking whom he may devour. I don't know about you tonight, but the devil is out seeking, trying to devour God's people. He want to bring us down. But somebody ought to serve notice on hell and tell hell it ain't going to happen because the Lord have set me free. And since the Lord set me free, why should I be bound? You can look at me funny. You can excommunicate me. You can act like you don't know me. You can put me out of your company. But I got to stay focused. Sometimes you got to tell your girlfriends and tell your boyfriends and tell the brotherhood. Sometimes you got to tell the sisterhood. I love all y'all, but I got to spend some time with my God because there's a work that I got to do. There's a focus that I got to keep in my life. I can't be dibbling and dabbling. I can't get slow for. I can't get lackadaisical. I got to be on time. 
time where I'm supposed to be at the time I'm supposed to be I can't be hanging out and not going to church I can't be hanging around and lose my prayer life I gotta stay focused is there anybody in here that want the Lord to really anoint you is there anybody in here that really want God to bring you out to look at your neighbor and say neighbor my advice to you is to stay focused you got to see God clear he already spoke it he spoke it once twice have I heard it power belong to God does anybody in here want the power of God you ought to shout power Hallelujah. We got to stay focused. We're living in the last days. And the devil is going about trying to discourage us. We're looking at every window. We're looking at every church. Talking about child. It don't take all that saving. But when you needed something, it took all that saving. When you was focused, you knew it took all that. They get up early and pray. I'm tired. I can't get up. But when you needed God, you was focused. You got up early in the morning. The Bible said early in the morning. Will I seek him? Anybody want to seek him? You got to get out of your comfort zone and say, Lord, I know I've been slack. I know I've been slow for him. But here I am. I'm ready to be focused on what you have for me. I'm ready to run and not be weary. I got to walk it out. And I'm not going to faint. If you help me. Somebody ought to say, help me, Lord. If you help me, I believe I'll make it. Look at somebody and say, Lord, I need, I need your help. If you help me, I'll be all right. If you help me, I'm coming out. Shout it out. My focus is on the will of God. My focus is on getting the work done. What is your work? Well, when he called us, oh, God called us out of uncleanness into holiness to show forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And then this, oh, the apostle picked it up and said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is power. When you get your focus, you'll get your power back. When you get your focus, you'll get your anointing back. That's why you can't sing. That's why you keep cracking. That's why you don't want to come to choir rehearsal because you ain't focused. But tell your neighbor, I'm coming back with a fresh anointing. I'm coming back with more power. I'm coming back. Somebody ought to shout out. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to do God's will because it is the will of God that I do this work. I've been down too long. They counted you out. Said you'll never make it. But look at yourself. You made it this far. You ought to give God glory. They said you'll never be here. You should have been dead in the crazy house. Sitting in the corner. Rocking. Not even knowing your name. But God allowed us another chance to get our focus back. Somebody shall focus on the work. He given us a work and we got to get it done for he's coming quick. Somebody ought to shout quick. The Lord is coming back like a thief in the night. We got to be ready but you got to stay focused. Stop worrying about the world. You can't change people. You just got to live right and watch God do the drawing. Somebody ought to say do it God. If you live right, somebody will catch on. But when we lose our focus, they told me a long time ago, they said when we lose our focus, our holiness, it becomes watered down. And I begin to think about it. I don't like nothing watered down. Nothing but water. Hallelujah. But they said this is how we do it.
do when we get out of God and our focus is not clear. We begin to water down what's right. And the people down your job, the people in your neighborhood, the people in your family that knew you once knew God, now they're looking at you funny because they say, won't you Christian? Won't you say one time? Why you ain't in church? Ain't it your church night? Don't you supposed to be in church? Ain't it your church day? Why you sitting up at home? Look at somebody and say, get your focus back. Get your focus back. Used to be a time you go on the job. You be quoting scriptures and witnessing the people about God. When you lost your focus, hallelujah, because you got lackadaisical. Now you got displaced because of what was going on around you. You wanted a raise and you got mad. You didn't go to the source, which was your God. That he's the one that give it promotion. Look at God and said it is God that give it promotion. Now they're looking at you funny. And there's somebody on your job that's waiting for you to talk about Jesus. You can say all you want to. They tired of me. No. There's somebody there that's waiting to hear about him. Because the Bible says that the word of God, it goes out. It's sent it out to do what he sent it to do. And it's going to accomplish everything is set out to do and his word will not return void. Look at somebody say get your focus back. Used to have the word in you. When they see you quoting God's word. Now they see you. You just an joking. Amen. You the, the, the life of the party. You the life of the office. Amen. You the jokester. You done got you a new career. They, they didn't know you was a comedian. Now you got your joke on. But look at your neighbor say your focus is in the wrong place. And I'm so glad that God got a people that are keeping house holy there are certain things that don't go on in the house of the Lord somebody ought to shout focus they got so much going on that's not of God but I'm so glad that God's people know what's right and when we come into this house this is the hospital anybody ever got healed in here hallelujah anybody ever got delivered in here anybody ever got set free in here then why will we allow the devil to let us walk in them doors any kind of way not prayed up gossip on our mind come to plop on that chair somebody ought to shout focus we used to be up doing stuff now you're talking about all they do is look at me funny they want me to sit down but they can want me to sit down all they want to I've been called to do a work and it does not matter what my haters say. It does not matter what the naysayers say. It does not matter what the debaters say. It does not matter what the hypocrites say. It does not matter what the church folks say. As long as God, as long as God tell me to go forth. Look at your neighbor and say, go forth. Well, I got to get out of here. But anybody getting your focus back? Hallelujah. You might not have been all the way unfocused. Maybe it was just a little cloudy. Now you can see it clear. Why you got to pray? Why you got to live right? Why you got to be an example? You can't stop now. You've come too far to give up on God. Look at your neighbor and say, because God will never give up on you. We got to push and we got to press. Paul said, I got to press through all of this stuff. I got to get to where God God have called me to be and I don't know about you but I feel a higher calling I feel a higher anointed I feel more power I feel strength anybody getting stronger tell your neighbor I'm stronger I'm better I'm wiser I'm back look at him tell him I'm back I'm back I'm back I'm back. I'm back with more power. I'm back with a fresh anointing. And a songwriter picked it up and said, you might as well get used to me. My mama may not be the queen, but my father's king of everything. And because I belong to him, I belong to the royal family. I might not be rich, but the God I serve is more than able. He got cattle 
up on a thousand hill said if I was hungry I wouldn't even tell you my God can do anything so why should I give up on God and give up on what he called me to do when God is able to see me through he brought me through this and he brought me through that and Lord I'm so grateful is anybody grateful look at your neighbor and say yes I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. We're maintaining a legacy. And I heard last night when you maintain, you carry on. Amen. You keep going. You don't stop it. And a legacy is passed down from an ancestor. Hallelujah. And your ancestor is where you come from. Your father, your grandfather, or your forefathers have passed a legacy down to the people of God. See, our legacy is not flesh and blood. Somebody ought to shout, no, no. You're not a natural being. Living a spiritual experience, but you a spiritual being. Oh, living a natural experience. So what we go through down here, we're supposed to be better than the world. They don't understand us. And when we're going through, we still thanking God because we're focused. We're going through. We still giving God praise. When the car break down, we still get to church. When the food get low, we still eating. Somebody all shout it out. Yeah. When the money get low God always supply because I'm focused he told me he would never leave me that's why I know he'll be there all the time and he said them that are holding my hand no devil in hell can pluck them out so we got a legacy of holiness hallelujah that's why I told you earlier you gotta know where your legacy is your inheritance is among them that are sanctified look at your neighbor say that's where it is that's where you're gonna get it from if you want to get anything from God you got to get spiritual you ought to say Lord help me to be spiritual is there anybody in here tonight that really want to be spiritual you ought to shout me Lord somebody ought to say me Lord I want to focus I want to do your will don't care what nobody say how they look at you funny you ought to keep on running until your day is done somebody ought to shout focus hallelujah I'm getting ready to close up in here hallelujah I believe I sweat it down to my shoe but I'm focused tonight I got a work to do because God is soon to come somebody ought to say the Lord is soon to come when Jesus cracked that sky he gonna say well done or depart from me if you stay focused he'll say well done does anybody want to hear him say it anybody want to hear him say it and whenever we get to a point in God when we lose our focus and we call the name Jesus and it don't mean nothing to you something wrong with you something wrong with your focus whenever somebody start talking about the power of God and you're not moved you've lost your focus for the Bible says the ways of a transgressor is hard but Jesus said come unto me all ye that labor is there anybody in here that had to labor and was heavy laden I said take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light when you keep your focus you don't mind being bound or making a sacrifice for the kingdom you don't mind being bound to the things of God and when I say bound I'm talking about being tied to the things of God you don't mind being tied to coming to church you don't mind being tied to known as a Christian as a saint of God when you've been bound by God you don't mind calling on his name and sharing with somebody else because you got your focus look at your neighbor and say neighbor God got great things but you gotta stay focused you can't get out of the will of God and get something from God because if you get out of the will of God to get it you gotta stay out of his will to keep it because God don't bless in mess and whatever's not his he don't put his name on it so some of this stuff running around I'm talking about it's God God haven't put his name there somebody ought to shout focus child you know God ain't in that focus focus well 
I got to get ready to leave y'all. I've enjoyed myself. I heard Pastor Murray say, good evening family. I got to get out of here. But before I go, I got to tell you something. Somebody shout focus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Nehemiah, he was focused on the work. The people had a mind to work. I said, you got to get with the right people. In order to get a work done, you can't hang out with folk that ain't going up. You can't hang out with folk that don't love God. Nehemiah, he had to sacrifice his position in the king's palace to get the work done. If you don't sacrifice, God can't use you. Is there anything you want to sacrifice for the kingdom of God in order to get the work done? You can't hold on to this and God put his blessing on it. You can't hold on to that and God put his blessing on it. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Are you willing to sacrifice that thing for the kingdom? Are you willing to give it up just to serve God? Are you willing to come out and let God bless you? And brother Nehemiah, he was so discouraged and he was so distraught that he could not sleep until the work got done. I don't understand us. We go home and sleep, laying up snoring, cooing like a baby, and the work ain't done. I can't understand it. Brother Nehemiah, he couldn't sleep, and he went to the king, and God worked it out. And when God worked it out, you can read it in your leisure. Brother Nehemiah had to go find people that had the same mind, had the same heart. Look at your neighbors, and you got the same heart. You got the same mind as me? Because if you don't want to do what I'm going to do, excuse me. I got to leave you. I've been with you long enough, but you ain't going nowhere. I got to get with somebody that's going somewhere. And the Bible say that Brother Nehemiah found the right people that had a mind to work. When the people get a mind, things can get done. When the people get a mind, the devil got to stand back. When the people get a mind, you won't let them talk about your pastor. When the people get a mind, I don't hear nobody saying that. When the people get a mind, they'll do what God say. And Nehemiah found the right people. They were praying. They were steadfast. They were ready to get it done. Is anybody here ready? We got a ready people. They're ready to go forward. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm one. I'm getting ready to go forward. And after that, they got together and Nehemiah put them on the wall. And one thing I like about it, the work was so tedious and the work was so hard, but they had the mind. Tell your neighbor, sometimes it might seem hard. Sometimes it might seem like we ain't going to make it, but tell them we going to make it because the Lord said so. And brother Nehemiah, it was so tedious to where the enemy tried to destroy it. Nehemiah said, this is what we going to do. We're going to put a weapon in one hand and a hammer in the other one. Sometimes you got to work with one eye going this way and the other one going that way, looking out for the devil so he don't destroy the work. Look at your neighbors and watch out. We got to stay focused. So they had a hammer in one hand and they had a sword in the other because they wanted to get it done. They were focused on the work and Nehemiah looked out and noticed. He said, the wall is so big and the wall is so long. I got workers over here. I got workers over there. And if the enemy come, I can't go to him in a hurry. So what Nehemiah did, he got some trumpeters and put a trumpet in the hand and said, if war break out, if the enemy come, sound the trumpet and we'll be there in a hurry. Tell your neighbor, I'm for you. And if the devil come to get you, I'll be there for you. I got your back. I'll be there for you. When the devil try to tear you down, I'll be there to build you up. I'm not going to let nobody destroy my brother. I'm not going to let nobody destroy my sister. I'm not going to let nobody destroy my pastor because I'm focused. I'm focused. Somebody ought to shout yes! Because I'm focused, Pastor, Pastor Cooper. I'm focused. 
And Nehemiah went on. And I'm getting ready to close for real. But after Nehemiah looked out, the work was so tedious. They couldn't even change clothes except to wash them. I lost just half of y'all right there. Because some of y'all so designer down. Ain't nothing wrong with that in this place. But when they get in the way of the work, you got to take it off. You got to put on something where you can still clean a bathroom. You got to put on something where you can still wash a toilet. You got to put on something where you can still vacuum the flow. You got to put on something where you can still pick up paper. And Pastor Nehemiah, they didn't change their clothes except to wash them. Look at somebody and say, are you really ready to get this work done? It's going to take a sacrifice. Everybody standing. Look at your neighbors. I'm the one. That's going to do God's will. I'm the one that's going to do what God say. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one that's going to do God's will. My anointing is worth fighting for. The calling on my life is worth fighting for. My family is worth fighting for. I see the devil trying to come in and destroy your homes, destroy your families. But tell that devil, I see you. You ain't coming in here because the power of the Holy Ghost is in this house. I'm going to stay focused. And when you stay focused, you'll see the devil coming. The reason why we can't see him, we lose our focus. And he came through the door up in the pulpit and we missed it. Somebody else shot you missed it because you wasn't focused but my advice tonight is to get back on track and let God have his way let him call you crazy let him call you anything don't let him call you at all but child you better stay focused look at your neighbor say your life depends on it is there anybody in here tonight that want to get your focus back is there anybody in here tonight that want God to take you higher is there anybody in here tonight that need a miracle is there anybody in here that I want you to come on down and let God bless you? Come on down and let God do it. Is there anybody, anybody anywhere? Come from the back, come from the front, come from the side, and let hell know you ain't going down like this. I ain't going down like this. I've been down long enough. I'm getting ready to get up and fight. You still got your fight in you. You got to fight that devil and tell him no, 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 no. God gonna do this thing. God gonna work this thing out. Anybody want God to work it out? Shout it out. Right now. now.
glory. Lift your hands in acknowledgement of the word. Stay focused. <laughs> 